uh, what client do you uh, would you reject automatically? Welcome, uh, Judith. Uh, Judith is a UX UI designer that's focused on uh, ethical practices uh, and sustainable practices in design. So thank you for joining us in this video. Uh, well, we'll be talking about many things, especially uh, about ethical and sustainable practices. But to start, uh, we've created a like a ping pong <laughs> questionnaire for you to answer. So. We can start with that. Okay. Figma or Adobe XD? Uh, Figma, definitely. <laughs> well, I have to confess that I've never used Adobe XD, but I have used Sketch and I still prefer Figma. Okay, great. Are you a more morning or a night person? A morning person. If I have to do something important, I prefer doing it first thing in the morning. Okay, great. What's the worst thing a client can do to you? Hmm. Apart from saying something like make my logo pop, I would say <laughs> when, when they come with last minute changes, I hate that because you will probably have to spend a lot of more time on that project. So yeah, that would okay. be it. That happens a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the ugliest app you have on your phone right now? Well, technically, I don't have it in my phone uh, anymore because I deleted it two days ago, but it was an app to track my sleep. And it was really ugly because it looked like a white frame with colors and also the design wasn't consistent at all. But the main reason why I deleted it was because it, wa it was battery consuming, not because it was ugly. I'm not that bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, uh, battery consuming apps are ugly too. In another way, yeah, yeah, not, in, not in an aesthetic <laughs> way, but they are ugly. So, well, the next one. Uh, what's your favorite YouTuber? Uh, Femke. She's a UX designer that works at Uber. Mm -hmm. And she shares a lot of great tips on how to get a UX job. And also she does video reviews, uh, testing really interesting tools for designers. So, so I love her YouTube channel. Great. How often do you update your portfolio? Um, okay. <laughs> I update the content of my portfolio once or twice a year, but when it comes to the design, I would say when I have time. <laughs> okay. And yeah. Yeah, that's something that every designer is talking about portfolios. When you talk, when you give a webinar about portfolios yeah. or do a post in Instagram or something like that, it's a catchy issue. Uh, the next one is... Yeah, yeah, that's true. The next one is, uh, what client do you uh, would you reject automatically? Mm, I would reject a client that doesn't value my work. For example, if I send them my prices or my proposal and they see something like, oh my God, your prices are really high, or I know someone who could do that for less or cheaper, I would reject them <laughs> because I don't like the, those vibes. <laughs> okay, great. And is, is there any brand in particular that's, for example, not sustainable enough or not ethical enough that you would say, no, no, that's my limit. Uh, I won't take that. Mm. Or have you I ever thought, thought of... about it? Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Maybe I don't like AliExpress and that, those kind of brands because, yeah. Yes. No, they, they are not really sustainable. So. Okay. <laughs> Okay, it's yes, it's like really fast fashion, super yeah. fast everything. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, the super one, fast everything. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, the next one is uh, this one is nice. Uh, if you had an unlimited budget, mm -hmm. what project would you work on? I would like to create like a UX school, but focused on sustainability, accessibility, and ethical design because I think. Those are topics that are not taught on con conventional schools or universities or courses. So I would really like to do something like that. Okay, that's that's great. That's something that, that you do. We will talk about this later, but you do it on your Instagram account. Uh, that will be in the description of this of this video. <laughs> um, but you you actually you are 
teaching your your followers to be more ethical or be more sustainable and you give tips so you're yeah you don't have an unlimited budget but you're, you're working <laughs> on it <laughs> i'm trying at least <laughs> great and the last one of this uh, part of the interview and of this ping pong uh, is if you had to choose only one social media for the rest of your life uh, what would it be mm. It would be Instagram because it's the one I use the most and also because I kind of like this informal environment where you can share your professional knowledge but also parts of your personal life because for example on LinkedIn you can do that you should only show your professional side so yeah okay. I would choose Instagram. <laughs> well, well that's great uh, thank you for answering these questions. Uh, <laughs> Now we will go on with with the interview with with the with the more um, real part of the interview maybe uh, that's uh, about well your work mainly uh, if you want to talk about uh, what you do and and what is your real focus no uh, sustainable and ethical design what what's that about uh, all yours. <laughs> Okay, so, well, I'm UX designer and right now I'm currently working as a UX and UI designer at Medictor, an e-health company based in Barcelona. And I'm really interested in sustainability and accessibility and ethical design because I think it's really important and sometimes we don't focus on that and we focus more on aesthetics and, yeah, on business requirements and I think we have to also look uh, out of these topics that's great and and when did you be become interested on these topics or yes on, on becoming a designer as a whole too so mm, i i don't remember the exact moment but i think it was when i was doing my communication degree more precisely when i was doing a subject um, that it was called something like multimedia product design Mm -hmm. because we had to do a lot of web design projects and then I discovered I, I loved it and I wanted to be a designer or something related. But it wasn't until I did my internship at the National Museum of Catalonia where I discovered that I wanted to be a UX designer to, to give value to the work of the design field. I mean, mm -hmm. because UX design is more about user's needs and yeah, and user needs. So I, I think it's, I don't know how to say that. It's more deep than graphic design in general. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, sure. Yes, yes. You're actually, yeah, well, you, you work on solving user's problems, no? Or, yeah, exactly. Or focusing on the user's needs. And then you give that like, um, uh, theoretic, theoretical uh, background or something like that, but that's the main issue maybe in, in UX UI mm -hmm. designers nowadays. Well, that's yeah. great. And, and what is it like to, to be in Barcelona? Uh, maybe people watching this uh, don't know Barcelona. Uh, what is it like, like being a designer no? in, in Barcelona? How, how is that in, uh, tech environment uh, or professional environment there? Well, I think there are a lot of opportunities right now because UX design is a really um, trending field. Yeah. And I would say that if you are a UX designer in Barcelona, you really need to teach your stakeholders and um, other colleagues to, well, teach about UX design because a lot of people yeah. don't know the, the importance of UX design. So I think that would yes. be something you <laughs> will need to do. There are also like uh, a lot. Well, yeah, there are a lot of met methodologies and and processes and that. So maybe you you have also the, uh, you have to do that uh, kind of work now, teaching your clients maybe that they are mm -hmm. a big company or something like that that have a lot of uh, waterfall maybe processes, and then you have to uh, incorporate new new techniques or new methodologies to that kind of yeah. of company. So that really maybe tough. Um, well, we are about to, to end this, this video. Um, if um, I, I will, will do the, the last question that is, would you rather work with uh, AliExpress forever <laughs> all, um, or work all your life uh, 
with the um, sleep uh, app that you deleted from your phone? Well, I would prefer to use the sleep tracker okay. <laughs> because I, I I won't have to communicate with the app. Well, I, I will have to interact with the app, but it's not the same. And also because I prefer to charge my phone and my Apple Watch twice a day than working with an experience. Okay, well, that's great. Uh, well, this is the, the end of the interview. Please, uh, if you are watching this, please subscribe to, to our channel and follow Shudit. Uh, that, well, it's a really nice uh, account to follow uh, and you will find a lot of tips and a lot of uh, things to, to talk about uh, regarding sustainable and ethical designs that are really important today. So thank you a lot. Thank you for having me. Great. Goodbye. Bye. Hi, for designers. If you really enjoyed this video, please hit the like or subscribe or whatever. Just leave a comment. It will help you really much to get to the YouTube algorithm. And for sure, you will see our videos all week.